Hello everyone and welcome to Robotics and Mechatronics Tutorials. This is the third part of the tutorial on how to build a low-cost robotic platform or better to say differential build robot that can be used to carry advanced sensors such as a camera or a lighter. The main goal of this project is to build a low-cost robotic platform that can be integrated with Robot Operating System or ROS. Also, the goal of this project is to build a low-cost robotic platform that can be used for testing the performance of advanced model-based control algorithms as well as the performance of machine learning, reinforcement learning, SLAM and navigation algorithms. In this third part of the tutorial series, I will explain how to interface DC motors with the motor driver and with Arduino code. The main idea is to use Arduino microcontroller as a low-level controller for controlling DC motor and for reading information from encoders. Then the idea is to add Raspberry Pi as a higher-level controller that will communicate with Arduino and Raspberry Pi will run ROS as well as advanced control and estimation algorithms. In this tutorial, I will explain how to interface DC motors with the motor driver and with Arduino. Furthermore, I will explain how to write a code for controlling DC motors from Arduino. Before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start with our microcontroller. As you can see over here, I'm using a clone of Arduino Mega as a low-level controller. Currently, this controller controls two DC motors by using this motor driver. Here is the motor driver. In the future, I will also install two encoders over here for reading the rotational angle and angular velocity of my wheels. I will also have to connect these two encoders to my microcontroller and I will need to use two additional interrupt ports. In the future, I will most likely add an inertial measurement unit, a gyroscope and possibly some other low-level sensors such as an ultrasonic sensor for obstacle avoidance, for example. Due to all these reasons, I need a microcontroller with a large number of ports and consequently, that's why I selected Arduino Mega. Then, my microcontroller is powered by a 9 volt battery and you can see this nice battery pack. I like it very much. And also, you can directly use this plug to plug in this battery pack to your microcontroller. In the future, I will most likely have to change my battery since I plan to use a Raspberry Pi as a higher level controller and consequently I need to provide power to my Raspberry Pi. The motors are controlled by a low cost motor driver with the product number L298N. I will repeat, the product number is L298N. Two DC motors are directly connected to these connections, left motor and the right motor. These six ports are connected directly to Arduino and they are used to control the direction and velocity of our motors. I will explain all the connections and Arduino wiring later on. Then. Compared to my second tutorial, instead of using alkaline AA batteries, I decided to provide more power to my motors by using a rechargeable battery pack shipped with one of the Elego Robotics kits. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that this battery provides around 7.4 volt. You can also use any other battery type that can provide about 6 or 7 volts. This battery is connected to these two connections of our motor driver. 
Next, let us talk about how to mount Arduino and the motor driver. What you can see over here is just the first prototype and do not criticize me too much at this point since I will improve the supports and make everything more compact. For the time being, I want to test different components and to see what works and what doesn't work as well as to test what I need to add to my robotic platform. As you can see over here, I'm using Maker Beam Aluminum Extrusions. Although these extrusions are a bit pricey, they're very easy to use and you can mount almost any device on them. You can see how my motor driver is attached. Also on the other side, you can see how I attached my Arduino. Maker Beam aluminum extrusions are very easy to use and as you can see over here I can easily add another platform on top of my base platform and on this platform I can for example add a lighter or I can place my Raspberry Pi. Here is a brief demonstration of amazing things and amazing designs that you can create with these aluminum extrusions. These aluminum extrusions often come with these bolts. Look at the head of this bolt. They're specially designed such that you can plug them in over here. That is, you can insert them in this groove and you can slide it. Then, observe the hole over here. This hole has a thread. And observe this. Here it is. I just created a T bracket, for example. Okay, let us say that we want to mount Arduino on these brackets. No problem. Observe. Another bolt. Slide it over here. You can use these two holes, for example. I will just use a single hole. For example, this one. Take a nut. Here's the nut. Screw the nut. Instead of screwing the nut manually, Maker Beam Aluminum Extrusions come with this special screwdriver. And you can simply do this. And let's see what happens. Okay, very firm, extremely firm, perfect. Here is another nice application of these Maker Beam extrusions. During the process of testing the Arduino and ROS code, I don't want to chase my robot around the room. Instead, I would like to perform all the tests here on this table. For that purpose, I need to lift my wheels such that they don't touch the ground and such that the robot does not fly away from my table. To do that, we can use the Maker Beam Aluminum Extrusions. Here's what we will do. We will take these extrusions and we will do the following. Here's the first one. Let's attach the second one over here. We can easily attach them as you can see over here. And we need to attach the third one. And the third one can be attached for example over here, over here, over here. Doesn't matter. Let's attach it over here since we have more space. Let's do that. Here it is. And you can also attach the fourth one. However, let's see, do we need actually the fourth one? Ah, we actually need the fourth one over here. 
And here's the fourth one. Okay, let's test our robot now. Aha, uh -huh. we can see that the wheels are not sitting on the table anymore. However, let's verify everything. Okay, perfect. I can simply run my robot on my table. In the sequel, we explain how to connect the motor driver with battery, Arduino, and with motor A and motor B. Also, in the sequel, we explain the Arduino code for controlling the motor and the motor driver. The connection diagram is shown in this figure. These two ports are used to connect motor A. On the other hand, these two ports are used to connect motor B. Over here, we connect the battery VCC voltage. In my case, this voltage is equal to 7.4 volts. Then, over here, we connect the battery ground. It is important to emphasize that Arduino and battery should have a common ground. Next, these six pins are used to control the motor direction and motor speed by using Arduino. The pins 5, 6, and 7, that is, these pins, are used to control motor A. On the other hand, the pins 9, 10, 11 are used to control motor B. Over here, we define Arduino pins that are used for controlling the motor A and motor B. The pin IN3 and the pin IN4 are used to control the direction of motor B. On the other hand, the pin E and B is used to control the speed of motor B. Similarly, the pin E and A is used to control the speed of motor A. And the pins IN1 and IN2 are used to control the direction of motor A. Here is our setup function. Over here, we are saying that the control pins for motor A and B are the output pins. Over here, we set all motors to OFF. That is, we do digital write to pin IN1 and IN2 low voltage. In that way, we will turn off motor A. Similarly, we can turn off motor B. Here is our loop function. By using the function analog write, we specify the speed, or better to say, angular velocity of the motor A and the motor B. The angular velocity can be specified by choosing a number between 0 and 255. 0 is 0 angular velocity, and 255 is the maximum angular velocity. Over here, we can change the direction of motor A. And over here, we can change the direction of motor B. Over here, we specify the spinning direction of motor A and the spinning direction of motor B. In the sequel, I will explain how to change the spinning direction of motor A. The same principle applies to motor B. Let's create a table over here. This column is motor A. Over here is our pin IN1 and IN2. When both IN1 and IN2 are low, then the motor A is off. On the other hand, the motor A is spinning forward if IN1 is high and IN2 is low. On the other hand, motor A is spinning in the opposite direction if IN1 is low and IN2 is high. And finally, motor is also off if IN1 is high and IN2 is also high. Finally, you need to perform a few tests. As I explained previously, over here we control the direction of two motors. Let's turn off both motors. 
consequently over here we will write low voltage and over here we will write low voltage. Let's offload and let's see what happens. Perfect. Both mo motors are off. The next test that you need to perform is to check both motors. That is, you need to check can they spin in both directions. Let's check that. Here, you need to apply high to spin in one direction. Let's check that. Okay, the right one is spinning in the clockwise direction. Let's change the direction. You do that by sending here low and sending over here high. Let's test it. Okay, perfect. You do the same thing for the other motor. Here high. Okay, it spins in the counterclockwise direction. Perfect. And then you need to check it over here. Let's see what happens. Perfect.